Yeah. Now you're in the movies now. Nah, not Look, really. Thank you for deigning to do this. This brand new podcast I just started. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. It's huge. Hey, you're in a fucking movie, dog. You're I'm in a, a big movie. I'm in a you big star movie. In the movie. You're not like. You're not in the background. You're not like a security guard. You're like you got lines. You've been doing a lot of acting. I'm trying, and there's, well, hopefully the movie's good. I don't know. It comes out, and I did this movie with Cena and Zac Efron, and uh, you got to say that. Oh. Like, you got to say that that way. That was you know, I did with Cena. Well, it's just I don't know. You know, I, I, it's not there in the, it's their movie. I'm just a guy in the movie. Those with guys them. are famous, and they know who you are. You've done well. Yeah, they're all right. It looked, You've done well for a kid from they're, Chicago. They're nice guys, and the yeah. movie was was fun. And then I hope it's good. There's no other explanation to film and television. No one ever knows why. Or most of the time, you know, you're you're just you're throwing a dart. You're like, man, I hope it hits. I, who knows? I, I I mean that. I know you have to be passive about it because I can't couldn't sit here and be. Like, it was amazing. Some yeah. of the scenes were so funny to me. Yeah, I just don't know what you never know what it looks like when it's done. But you're a guy who uh, you know I love you to death. And you're a guy, I think, who knows what's important in life. Did you have a good time filming the movie? You know, I did. So uh, it doesn't matter what happens. With no, I know, you, that's true. As long I, as you and John were like having games like this and having fun off set. Yeah, we, you, and, and my family came out, which was nice. I got my parents down there and the old wifey your, down there. Your and, dad's a big John Cena fan. Huge, huge, yeah. huge. Are you making yeah. a comment about his mental state? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know where I went. I was just, uh, you'll yeah. come, we'll come back to it. Okay. No, no, he, no, my, uh. My Ooh, mom, would, your my dad's mom okay? and dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, Is John Cena okay? Uh, yeah, I'm teasing. So, I'm teasing. Okay, I'm teasing. I don't want to make fun of anybody who's uh, got mental problems. No, no, no. God, yeah. no. Except for your brother. Well, who loves they're John not Cena? Problems. They're you know they're fixed now. We know fixed. what to do. Yeah. yeah, we shot him out back behind the barn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop. <laughs> no, Australia was phenomenal to go film down there, and also, it just it you know honestly it like uh, there was a couple of moments that woke me up of like. I can't believe this is my life that I get to do this. Like, I, I cannot believe I get to do this. I mean, it was a little, you know, surreal. And then, and then it flew by, even though it was two and a half months or whatever. And you do have to view it like that, right? Like, uh, you loved, I love the time. I hope it's good. If it's not, it's okay. I still had a fun time. You're taking shots. Movies are impossible. Comedy movies particularly are impossible. Do you care if it does well or not? Like you, you, well, here's what's like, really ironic about yeah. that. It doesn't benefit me anymore. So yeah. like, I mean, it does in a social setting, right? In terms of like my career, I want to work in more comedy, film and television because I really enjoy it. And that would help you propel forward. But uh, financially, no. I mean, you get a baby little check these days. Yeah. The money goes to the big dogs. You make almost no money. And then, you know, it's, if the movie crushes, I don't get any more money. It right. doesn't matter. Right. So I wanted to do well uh culturally yes right. i want people to go that was funny you were good at it right it was funny i liked it or even if they hate the movie they go oh i like some of your scenes your scenes were good right that's kind of where i'm at i know that's a little selfish but that's the truth is like if it gets you know it, it might not even make it to the theaters amazon's deciding whether they're gonna put in the theaters or gonna keep online because of what's going on in our business right now it's crazy i wonder though like is it's a definitely a, it's a theater film without a doubt it's, go see it in the theaters if it's there no if it gets to the theaters they might pull it out they don't know that's They're, crazy that there would be a movie with you three guys and they wouldn't put it in the theater but I guess now people don't go to the movies right not as much as they used to yeah. and also no one cares nobody right. gives a shit they'll buy it from their house and their everyone has a home theater right. remember when a flat screen was like eighty thousand dollars now they're like seventy five bucks at 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 Whole Foods I yeah. mean it's like. You, anybody can get a nice TV now, and and no, people want to sit on their couch. I think movie experience is better. I like going to the theater. Right. I enjoy, when, when me and my wife go, I get like in popcorn and hanging out and sneaking into a little theater late at night. I like, I really like the world. I don't know what it is. I enjoy being in this room, feeling the energy of this, of the movie. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't, but I hope we get back into the theater and then, you know, Hopefully it's good. I, I, you know, they tested it. They just tested it four, four to four to five different times. And how did it test it really well? But I, who knows what that even means? And what's the demographic that they tested it for? Uh, you know, Pete Fairley did it. You know who that is? He's the I, guy. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, Pete Fairley did it, which was great. I mean, that was. I mean, that's incredible. It was like huh? the reason I did it. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, it's I mean you also did it because it was a movie and they wanted you to do it. No, no. Pete was the reason I did the movie. Oh, you wouldn't have done it if it wasn't him? Well, I mean, if you, if you want to you that baseball. Fucking, that would be ball. I mean, no. that would be if you just turned it down. You go, I only do movies that Pete Farley did. Well, what happened to the truth really is, I'll give you the long story. It's yeah. it's boring, but it's not funny, but it's true. It's uh, We'll spice I, it up. I All right, so... <laughs> I was down in Puerto Rico doing coke with this girl that I was seeing. Okay, that was talking. I got yeah. a script sent to me on the yeah. island. Yeah. And uh, after I slipped the throat to one of my enemies, I read this script. <laughs> <laughs> I got the script ten years ago from a friend of a friend before I was even before I was even considered in the business to get scripts. 
So I got it from a kid who was working in production. It's like, you would love this script. I read the story. It was one of the best scripts I'd ever read. And I mean that. Like, genuinely. I was like, this is so funny. It's, it was so funny. And I can give you the overarching story is these guys, these three best friends, they, you know, they've used an alibi their whole life to lie to their girlfriends and parents and wives and moms and dads uh, to get out of stuff. And now the time has come for them to, uh, you know, the families are like, we want to meet this guy, this alibi you keep saying. Like, you're going to Tahoe to his his children's event and you go to a charity event in the Bahamas when really they've been using this as a scapegoat to go have fun their whole lives, these three best friends. And so now the time is up. They need to show who, you know, who the alibi is. And so they hire a lunatic to play their alibi and the rest is chaos. Uh, but it was a, hilarity ensues. It's a great, yeah. And yeah. so they hire a lunatic to, to like masquerade as one of their best friends. And, you know, he- Who's plays, Who plays that? Cena. Seen as that guy. Yeah, it's me, yeah. Jermaine Fowler, and Zach Efron. Good old Jermaine Fowler. Yeah, me, great me Jermaine Fowler, and, and Efron are our three best friends. Great cast. Yeah, it's great, yeah. man. And then... I love Jermaine Fowler. One of the good guys I've met no, he's in this the man. business. Yeah. We had so much fun, man. It's just a good human being. It's nice to have another comic there, too. It, yeah. helped, it helped have a comedian, you know, because, I don't know, there's something about you immediately gravitate to comedians. There is. There's a brokenness to us. Well, you just know that they know that we know that I know that we're there. That you we're, know, that we're both in the same... Yeah. We both feel the same kind of anxiety. We're here, we're not. We're thinking about the funny thing. Right. We're, we're trying to. We're, we're trying, trying to, to be make liked. this yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. We want to be uh, uh, self-serving, but also uh, social pleasers, and try to be as funny as we can, but also so self-conscious. Uh, yeah, you're so self-conscious. Comics are so like in their own stupid head. Yeah. You say a joke on set, and you're like, "Is everyone gonna be mad at that? That yeah. made fun of Polish guys for 20 minutes? Are people yeah. gonna be mad at? But it just whatever. But anyway. Yeah, so the so they sent me the movie. <laughs> I made a joke about Polish, Polish guys. guys. Should I not say minutes? that? Yeah, like, I kept, this I guy just went it. on a fucking Polish guy tirade. <laughs> the Santino's on setting. Who changed these lights? A Polish guy. He keeps going back to it. minutes on Polish guys. <laughs> no, but it, it, they. Re I read it. I loved it. And then years, le I met with Pete. I asked Pete Fairley. I asked my agent if I can meet with him. This is a true story. It's crazy. I asked if I can meet with him. And every friend I've had over the years, I've sent them the script. I go, you have to read the script. It's so funny. And I have no business like sending scripts. I, I couldn't get anything. I just loved it. So I sent it to friends for fun. Yeah. And I said, can I take a meeting with Pete Farrell? And Pete had maybe heard of me through the fringe of comedy world years yeah. ago. Yeah. And he said, yes, he took a meeting. And I was like, I would, I would slit a throat to be one of those friends in that movie. And he was like, we're going to work on it together one day. We'll try, you know? And then time had passed, time has passed, time has passed, time has passed. And out of the blue, kind of, I ran into him at a charity event. And Larry David was there. And I had just done Curb. And Larry which kind was of, a while ago, which was a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, three years ago, yeah, four years yeah. ago. And then he, he kind of vouched for me. Yeah. A little bit. Larry was like, hey, he was like, good to see you. He's like, oh, so funny, you know, da, da, da. And I think that like, you know, I don't know, like helped a little bit in a yeah. weird way. And then Pete was like, we're going to make that movie. And I was like, yeah, right on. I hope so. You know, it had been years and years and years. It had been shelved. The original version was written for Jim Carrey to play Ricky Stenicki, who John Cena plays. But now right. Jim... Not interested in the he project. He doesn't want to do movies anymore. He doesn't want to do anything. No, he wants he, to paint. He says, I have enough. He wants to paint and get political. Yeah. It's so just... it's, that's his thing now. So Cena was assigned to it. I'm sorry. I'm skipping forward. But after this charity event, he's he's at the bar and he's drinking with me. And he's like, I'm serious. We're going to make the movie. And I said, okay, okay. You know, I've heard this a million times. Like, we can't wait to work with you. And I hope to work with you. And I said, well, you know, maybe I'll get an audition. And then a year goes by and another year goes, you know, whatever. Oh, we're, we're still working on it. I checked in with him one time. And then I went to Paris from here with like Schultz and a bunch of these goons for this thing that we did, uh, this event that we... Was that the fashion comedy? Yeah, exactly. And I landed in New York and I was at the airport and Pete, I, I got a phone call, you know, an out of the country phone call and it was from Pete Fairley. And he was like, I need you to come to Australia and do this movie. Because originally um, they called me about auditioning for the role, putting myself on tape. Uh, I kind of jumped forward, but... I said no. I didn't want to do it with the tape because the character was not me. And it genuinely wasn't. Right. And the script had changed five, seven, eight drafts later. Right. right. And then the character was like this kind of hippy dippy man bun, holistic, soul filled, uh, kind of grassroots, dirty fingernails guy. And I, I, I just, I, I, when I was like, I don't think this is me. I don't even think I can do it, genuinely. And I called my agent and I said, I tried and it was stupid. Every time I did it, I was like, I look like an idiot. And I'm not funny. It didn't sound funny when I said stuff in the character. I found, yeah. I found myself to be corny. So I literally let it go. As weird as that sounds, I was like, I don't think I can do it. I was like, it's not for me. It's definitely not for me. I know, I think they, I think they know who they want anyway. That's what I was, so I said, they might as well just give it to the, the guy who's the hippy dippy cool funny. I don't even know who that is, but it wasn't me. And then Pete called and they had casted someone else. Uh, Cause, and he told me that. He said, I just want to let you know, we casted someone else. I love you, but 
We can't go back to the well now. Casted? Yeah, they casted someone else. They cast someone else. Cast someone else. They just, cast I'm someone. Sorry, I don't want to be that guy, but no, but you did. I did do it. Yeah. And then. Uh, sorry about that. And no, no, no. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. I, I I get what you needed to do. I heard, it was when just, you got an outer box that big on your phone, I get it. <laughs> you got to be bigger than everyone else, better than everyone else. I get it. I get it. You're going to drop it that much? So here's the deal. And I'm usually the one that says stuff like that. No, so, you're right, but yeah. you're right. They cast it someone else. Cast, so cast they cast it. this guy. They casted this other guy. <laughs> and and he ended up not being able to do it, which is crazy. Why? You I, you killed him. I think it was a personal thing. Oh. That'd be uh, funny. That would be a great movie. You killed the guy for the I, role you wanted. That I yeah. wanted, but I didn't get, but I turned down. But yeah. I initially kind of said no in a weird way that I didn't want to put myself on tape. So he couldn't do it? Yeah, something happened with his family. Something fell through. And then Pete called and was like, can you beat Australia? And I said, when? He's like, in four days. So I literally had to fly back to LA after doing another day in New York, packed one day, kissed the lady, got on a flight and went to Australia. I mean, it was an overnight, it was a whirlwind. It was like, it, it, I was, I had a mental breakdown on the third day because I kind of was overwhelmed. I didn't really realize what happened. I hadn't been home before that also. Because it all happened so quick. Just yeah, like, but yeah. I hadn't been home in like a month yeah. before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hadn't been home in like four months. Right. So my brain was, my ticker was off. I just, right. I, so I literally was in my hotel and I had a mental crack, big time. Ooh, tell me about it. It just hit I've me. I've had a few of those. Dude, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. I know. I've seen some of them. You yeah. put them up online. See, yeah. I don't do that. <laughs> I just save it for myself. Yeah, yeah. No, I was sitting in my hotel That's room. That's the benefit of being Irish. You keep it. You fucking well, push, push it down. down. Yeah, push it down. Push it down with every fucking... Yeah. It's like booze. Pour booze on it. That's right. Yeah. Like, 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 yeah, like, like. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was sitting in my hotel and I was eating and I was staring at the river, the great Yarra River, out my window. And I realized that I was all alone. Like it would hit me. Like I, I was like, I'm so alone. I'm I, I'm around the world. If something happens to someone I love, I'm nowhere near them. I am all alone. It was the creepiest feeling I'd ever had. I was so far. The flight took takes an entire day, and I was alone in my hotel room. Jermaine, who I don't really know that well, he wasn't even there yet. They were mm -hmm. coming a day later, or two days later. Mm -hmm. I didn't meet really anybody from the cast. I'd wandered around Melbourne for two days by myself. So you just felt like a like a just a heavy loneliness. Because I was supposed to be studying and reading up for the character because yeah. it was we were about to start shooting. Right. So it was like you have to start like really getting into it. Because right. there's so many notes and changes and we were, you know, three days away from starting our first scene. Yeah. And they have to do a makeup test and wardrobe and, and it's like you're you're kind of like you're like go, 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 go. And then you sit in your hotel room and you're like, I don't even I don't I don't even know how I got here. Can I tell you what happened? I think I know what happened. Uh you're No. <laughs> No, no, Dad? <laughs> no, no I, seriously, I think what happened is you were, first of all, you were alone. So, yeah, it was, uh, so you're like, alone. you're across the world. You haven't, you're tired. It's exhausting. You're a little burnt out. Uh, also, you have performance anxiety. Oh my God, I got to learn all this stuff, something new. So you have a little bit of an adjustment disorder yeah. thing going on and you have a damaged childhood. And so <laughs> that feeling that you have yeah. is, is from childhood. Yeah. That happens to me. And now I know I'm like, oh, that's from there. Well, you know what it is? You don't, I don't want to let any, I, I, you're afraid of letting people down. Yeah. You have this overwhelming thing. you do thing. a lot. Yeah. That's why, dude, I, I, that's why I showed up late to this podcast. I was hoping you'd cancel. I was like, let him make me let yeah, him down. You were like, you were like, I'm still 45 minutes out. I was like, I'm still here. I go, look, dude, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to land in Newark in an hour and a half. Yeah. I'm not in New York yet, but I could be there maybe <laughs> in three days. I'm like, that's good. You're like, I might as well do it. <laughs>